Okay, listen to this hadith. The Prophet, peace be upon him, says what? Nothing is more honorable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than supplication. Meaning what? Meaning that the most thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves from his servants and honors them with is that they raise their hands and pray to him saying, Ya Allah, Ya Rabb. The Prophet, peace be upon him, says what? Man la yas'al yughdab alayh. He who doesn't ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his anger bestows him. Can you imagine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gets angry at you for not asking him for your needs? The Prophet sallallahu says, Ad-du'a huwa al-ibadah. Supplication is what worshipping is. Just three words. Supplication is worshipping. How about performing salat prayer? Or how about charity and pilgrimage? How is supplication what worshipping is? Note something that's very strange. What's the meaning of worshipping, ibadah? What is a worshipper or a servant or a slave, abd? The origin of the word abudiyya or slavery is abada. And what does abada mean? When you say abidat al ard, it means the land was enslaved. So a abd or a worshipper or a slave means submissive or humble and cringing between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's hands. So, what is the purpose or the goal of slavery or the purpose of worshipping al abudiyya? The purpose of the acts of worshipping is that you feel your weakness, your need for him, your humbleness and your poverty between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's hands. Ya ayyuhal nas, antum al fuqara ila Allah, wallahu huwa al ghaniyu al hamid. O you men, it's you that have need of Allah, but Allah is the one free of all wants and worthy of all praise. So the purpose of worshipping is that you feel your need for him. So you can't raise your hands and ask him and he returns you empty handed, right? يَسْتَحِي اللَّهُ أَنْ يَرْفَعَ الْعَبْدِ إِلَيْهِ يَدِهِ ثُمَّ يَرُدُّهُمْ سِفْرًا خَائِبِينَ SubhanAllah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is embarrassed that his servants raise his hands to him and he returns them empty disappointed. What does that mean? It means supplication is accepted. الدُّعَاء مُسْتَجَاب Guys, comprehend. Don't you believe it? Don't you have faith? Why don't you raise your hands and supplicate and make dua? And note something, why do we supplicate? We supplicate for three things or three reasons. Of course, one of them is to ask for what we need. But don't ever think that this is the main reason why we supplicate or make dua. The main reason we supplicate is that it's an act of worshipping, a proof of our submission and enslavement to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it has become an order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to supplicate to him, even if you don't need anything. Oh Allah, be pleased with me. So you'll supplicate even if you don't need anything. Because why? It's an act of worshipping to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The other reason we supplicate is to learn how to humble ourselves and be poor and feel our humiliation and our weakness between His hands. Supplication is the best thing to teach you how to be like that. To feel Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's glory and how little you are between His hands. So let's look at examples of people who supplicate, whose supplication was accepted. I'm trying really to make you comprehend that supplication is accepted, that dua mustajab, that we just never comprehend that and we never try to use this weapon. Raise your hands and pray now. It could be Laylatul Qadr. Pray tonight. Maybe it is, wallahi. All that's left is a couple of days and Ramadan will be over. The chance will be gone. And if you're in need of something, and we all are, ask for it tonight. None of us guarantee if we'll live till next Ramadan or not. SubhanAllah. So let's look at the examples of the acceptance of supplication. You'll see something very strange, and that is the first three chapters of surah or the surahs in the Quran, Al-Fatiha, Al-Baqarah, and Ali Imran. All three of them end with supplication or dua, and that is due to the greatness of supplication. What does Al-Fatiha end with? Show us the straight way, Ihdina Sirat al-Mustaqim, the, the way of those who, of whom thou have bestowed thy grace, and so on. Again, Surah Al-Baqarah ends with what Rabbana la tu akhidna inna sina wa akhtana to the end. Our Lord condemn us not if our if we forget or fall into error. Our Lord till the end of the verse. Ali Amran, Rabbana inna sami'na munadi an yunadi lil iman an aminu bi Rabbikum fa amanna. Rabbana faghfir lana dunubana. Our Lord, we have heard the call of one calling us to faith. Believe in thy Lord, and we have believed. Our Lord, forgive us our sins till the end. And as if the first chapters of the Quran are telling us what? Supplication, 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 dua, dua, dua. The ending of the verse is supplication. The ending of the deeds is supplication. The ending of the holy month is supplication. And the ending of the verse about fasting is supplication. Believe me, supplication is the solution. The solution to all our troubles and our needs. How can you have such a guaranteed tool and not use it? Pray, ya gamaha ittu, and be 100% sure that it's going to be accepted. A dua mustajab, supplication is accepted. Okay, let's look at our first example. 
Example, Prophet Solomon, peace be upon him, he makes a supplication from thousands of years and it's accepted till this day. Imagine when a supplication is made and its effect or its impact lasts for thousands of years. He said, O oh my Lord, forgive me and grant me a kingdom which it may be suits not another after me. Thou art the grantor of bounties without measure. قال رب اغفر لي وهب لي ملكا لا ينبغي لأحد من بعدي إنك أنت الوهاب. Until this day, no one has the wealth or the kingdom that the kingdom that Solomon had. Subhanallah, Subhanallah. Wallahi, supplication is such a great tool. He made one supplication in a moment of sincerity, and it lasted errors and errors, and still will till the day of judgment. Look at another example. Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, supplication of him how it was accepted so many years ago. My Lord, make this a city of peace and feed its people with fruits. How is Mecca today? How is it? How was it like when he made this supplication? A bare desert, right? Could anyone believe that this dua would be accepted? Subhanak ya Rabb. Who would believe that Solomon, who lived thousands of years ago, and us nowadays with all our modern technology, and we can't reach what he reached? So don't tell me, oh, but I don't have the technology, we live in a third world. No excuse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the king of the heavens and the earth, and he can give whom he pleases. And look at Ibrahim's prayer. He didn't say to himself, this is a bare desert. There's no way it will be ever populated, right? Look at it now. It's the refuge of all believers and will be till the day of judgment. Look at Prophet Zechariah's um, dua or supplication, and he was deprived from having children. And he says, my head has flared with white hair, and I'm an old man, and my wife is an old barren woman. And he puts his hands up and he prays and says what? رَبِّ لَا تَذِرْنِي فَرْدًا وَأَنْتَ خَيْرُ الْوَارِثِينَ فَاسْتَجَبْنَا لَهُ وَوَهَبْنَا لَهُ يَحْيَى وَأَصْلَحْنَا لَهُ زَوْجَهُ And remember Zechariah when he cried to his Lord, O Lord, leave me not without offspring, though thou art the best of inheritors. So we listened to him, and we granted him Yahya. We cured his wife's barrenness for him. The words, so we listened to him, or we accepted the prayer, فَاسْتَجَبْنَ لَهُ was mentioned with all the prophets. Look at Prophet Nuh, peace be upon him, supplication, 950 years being harassed and heard by the, peace, but by the people. A supplication made by someone oppressed, someone defeated. So what was the verse, what does the verse say? فَتَحْنَ أَبْوَابَ السَّمَاءِ so we opened the gates of heavens with water pouring forth and we caused the earth to gush forth with springs so the waters met and, and rose to the extent decreed what was it why what was this amr that qudr or the extent that was decreed what was it because of dua sayyidna nuh nuh alayhi salam supplication those of you who don't have kids those of you who are oppressed those of you who long to enter heaven, those of you who wish to be obedient to, be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, supplication, supplication of dua, those who wish to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, young men and women who got closer this Ramadan and wish to stay that way after Ramadan, pray, oh Allah, strengthen me. Allah, keep me on your straight path and stabilize me, please, ya Allah. Did you see the stories of the prophets? Did you see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls us for guidance? If you have another, a father or a mother, do you pray for them sincerely? Or do you say, oh man, I've prayed for them a lot, a long time, but there's no use. No, then you don't understand what supplication is. Pray as much as you can. I've seen the strangest things in supplication, wonders, wallahi. The heavenly miracles that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows us in examples of acceptance makes us astonished. I had a sister I've been praying for since 1991 that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may guide her till 2000 and I'm praying. And I didn't see any effect to my prayers. And suddenly in 2000, I found her a totally different person. Imagine nine years of supplicating and a miracle happens. Subhanallah. Abu Huraira came to the Prophet وسلم, crying. The Prophet asked, what's wrong Abu Huraira? He said, my mother. He said, what's wrong with her? He said, she's denied and defied and cursed you and said terrible things I can't say in front of you, O Prophet. O Prophet of Allah, pray Allah that he may guide my mother. You see, Abu Huraira knows that the solution to finish this issue is what? Supplication, dua. So the Prophet ﷺ raises his hands and says, Oh Wallah, guide the mother of Abu Huraira. So he said, I felt optimistic with the Prophet's prayer and returned home. So my mother heard my footsteps by the house and called, Who is it? And I heard her voice with the harshness in it. And I said, Abu Huraira. So she said, Stand still, mechanic. So I said to myself, She's going to scold me like every day. Then she opened the door and said, Listen, Abu Huraira. 
I bear witness that there is no God except Allah and that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. He said, I cried, I cried. Is this possible? So I returned to the Prophet ﷺ crying and said, Good news, O oh Muhammad, of Prophet of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has accepted your supplication and guided Umm Abu Hurairah. So the Prophet said, Alhamdulillah, all praise to Allah. So I said, O oh Messenger of Allah, make another supplication for me. So he said, Go ahead, Abu Hurairah. He said, O oh Messenger of Allah, Pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes me and my mother beloved by the believers and make the believers beloved to our hearts. Do you see the supplication or the prayer he chose? What would you say? Pray I get a lot of money or this car or that house? No. O oh, Messenger, pray that the believers love us and that we love them. So he raised his hands and said, O oh Allah, make the servant and his mother beloved to the believers' hearts and make the believers beloved to them. Abu Huraira said, not a single believer heard of me till the day I died unless he loved me and not a single believer heard of my mother unless they loved her and Allah knows that my heart overflows with love to all believers due to the Prophet ﷺ's supplication SubhanAllah I beg you pray supplicate Ida. supplication is accepted do you comprehend what I'm saying let me ask you how many times have you supplicated and your supplication was accepted do you remember Try to recall how many times you raised your hands and prayed from the day you were born. Thousands of times? How many were accepted? Many or just a few? You know what happens? Let me tell you what happens. Let me tell you what the shaitan or the devil does. The devil comes right after your supplication is accepted and makes you forget that the reason that what has happened was because your supplication was accepted. He tells you, oh good, 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 the problem was solved so that you get distracted. وَمَا أَنْسَيْنِيهِ إِلَّا الشَّيْطَانِ None but Satan made me forget. Why does he do that? Because if you start linking between the matter of the acceptance, what happened, and between that you actually prayed for this thing to happen, what would your relationship with praying or supplicating be like, right? You'll feel, oh my God, every time I pray for something, it happens. He doesn't want that, right? And how eager will you be to make supplication, which is the most loved action of worshipping to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So Satan comes at that moment of acceptance and makes you forget and forget that this was due to your supplication. And this is an old strategy that Satan has followed with all the worshippers. It scares Satan that you would link between what happened and that you prayed for that matter to happen. Do you even remember what you, when you prayed for that? Wallahi, thousands of supplications, but Satan makes us forget. Okay. There are certain times that supplication is preferable or accepted more. Yes, of course there is. The last third of the night, the Hajjud prayer, people who are up in the last 10 days, inshallah, from Ramadan, pray during your night the Hajjud prayer, supplicate. There are people who are up in Ramadan till Fajr, sitting watching series and shows on TVs. This is a time, a time of acceptance of supplication. The third night, the third part of the night, at al akhir min al-layl. The Prophet, peace be upon him, says, in the night there's an hour in which if a Muslim worshiper a Muslim worshiper or servant asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the goods of this life and the hereafter unless his supplication is accepted and Allah gave him what he asked for we said O Messenger Allah what hour is that he said the third part of the night the third part of the night go for layl al akhir go for layl al akhir the Prophet peace be upon him says our Lord glorified and exalted be he descends each night to the earth sky when there remains the final third of the night, from one to four approximately, the third part of the night, and he says, who is saying a prayer to me that I may answer it? Who is asking something of me that I may give it to him? Who is asking forgiveness of me that I may forgive him? Please try to sit and picture this. When the clock strike one, strikes one or two, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls upon you, upon his servants on earth. Does anyone have a problem? Does anyone want to repent? Does anyone want to ask for forgiveness? Why is your heart in denial? Why is your heart so harsh like this? Why can't you believe? Has materialism overtaken your heart to this extent, to the extent that you can't feel him or hear him calling you every night and asking you, do you need something? Subhanak, Ya Rabbi. What is another preferred time in which supplication is accepted more? Why you're prostrating or doing sujood? And we do a lot of sujood these days in the last 10 days of Ramadan. The Prophet, peace be upon him, says what? The closest time a worshiper is from, Lord, from his Lord is during what? Is during prostration or during sujood.